Brayden. And I'm Nikos. Welcome back to TNN. We hope you had a great winter break, because I know I didn't. We're going to kick off this week with some Titan talk. Hi, this is Titan Talk with Tyler McAllister, Abby Madley, and Anna Smith, and Allison Lowe. The first computer. Technology, especially domestic technology, has been improving at a rapid rate, and so is our use of it. We have to have the latest smartphone, the newest computer, and any form of technology we can get our hands on. Does this mean we're too dependent on technology? So, what do you guys think? I think we're too dependent on it, because I, I use my phone every day, and uh, every time I get a chance, I use it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, same. Um, and I think that if, like, technology or yeah everything would like go out then we'd be like complete like hopeless because you know no, 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 what yeah we wouldn't know what to do and yeah people would go crazy and stuff i mean i don't think that we're too dependent on it. i think we're getting there but i mean you definitely see where it's like we can't even figure out something on our own without looking it up on google yeah or we don't watch tv anymore we watch <laughs> netflix <laughs> And we don't read books like actual books, we read them on our phones. So, and yeah, we're just attached to our Some phone. people don't even know how to build a fire properly. I don't know how without to do that. A, without a lighter. I don't know how to do that, but that's because I've never been camping. You can get it like kind of <laughs> Where are we getting off? This is the time talk. Have a great day. My grandma's really dependent on technology. Is she on life support or something? No, she just really likes Candy Crush. Oh, alright. Now it's time to go watch Boogie stop some kids who just want to go to the restroom and get back to class and ask them some odd questions. On to the hallway talk show. What quarterback won a Super Bowl in the middle of Deflate Gate? Deflate Gate? What quarterback won the Super Bowl in the middle of it in 2015? In the middle of a Super Bowl. Deflate Gate. Do you know what that is? Yes. What is it? Where the team uh, took air out of all the balls, so the balls were flat, and they used them in the game. Yeah, what quarterback won the Super Bowl for them? Tom Brady? Yep. Tom Brady? What Tom Brady? Tom Brady. Tom Brady? A group of people attacked Paris. Uh, I think they are. Terrorists. I don't know. A terrorist, Indian. Yeah. ISIS? ISIS. 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 Yeah, three for three. Nick! Uh, what big law, national law, did the Supreme Court legalize in 2015? Oh, crap. Marijuana. No. Another guess? <laughs> um, gambling. No. <laughs> uh, it has to do with very colorful. Oh, gay rights. Yes. Gay marriage. Yes. I don't know. It has to do with marriage. Gay marriage? Yeah. Gay Na marriage. Yeah. I always love watching those. If only the kids on them could say the same. Those poor, poor kids. Well, anyway, as some of you may have heard, Coach Gaither got his 100th win recently. In order to commemorate this, we're going to be interviewing him along with some of his players. How do you feel about getting your 100th win? It feels really good because you can go back to, uh, to all the years that uh, we've been here for four years now. This is the beginning of fifth year. In Within those hundred wins, there's so many players and so many memories that come from those players over the course of the seasons. And, and when you reflect back, uh, you don't think about the wins as much as you think about the stories and the players that were involved in those wins. And so, you know, the more I reflect on that, uh, it's, it's pretty enjoyable uh, to, to reach that milestone. What are your plans for the future? You know, I hope we can continue to build on the success that we've had already as a program. Uh, you know, we're going we're to have more kids come through our program, uh, new faces, and we hope to just continue to build on that same success and 
uh, to, to give kids an opportunity uh, not only to play basketball, to, but to influence their lives and, and uh, hopefully see them 10 years down the road, graduate college and have, have nice jobs and be able to come back and support college life. How do you feel about the team right now? Our team's making a lot of improvements. Uh, you know, we went on a five-game winning streak, and then we, we got beat last night by South Oklahoma. But we, we played hard. We competed against the number two team in our region. Uh, so our, our team has all the potential in the world to, to win a region again this year. Um, our sophomores are, are starting to play a lot better. Our seniors are becoming more consistent. So. I do, I do feel like if we continue to build on the success we've had in recent games, uh, we can win a regional championship. Thank you. Thank you. So how do you feel about Coach Gaither? He's a good guy, good coach, um, he knows what he's doing, and he's helped us a lot through this season and this school from what I know, and yeah, he's a good guy. Right. What's your outlook on the season so far? Uh, we've had some ups and downs, and but we're seeming to be somewhat getting stuff. It's still a big work in progress, though. We can definitely get a lot better. And How do you feel about being on the team that got Coach Gaither his 100th one? I mean, it's pretty cool, um, but you've got to give it up to him and his previous teams getting 20 plus wins a year. Um, made it a little easier for us, but you know, I'm just really happy for him that he gets that reward. All right. How do you feel about Coach Gaither? I like him as a person. He's a good coach, he knows the game. He likes teaching it to us, and he pushes us to be the best of our abilities. What's your outlook on the season so far? Oh, we're doing well so far. We're young, but we're coming together as a team. Uh, we're growing every day, but it's just a process. Happy and used to each other, but we'll be good going into the postseason. How did it feel to be a part of the team that got Coach K through his 100th win? It felt good. It felt accomplishing. Uh, being a part of the team's previous seasons. Uh, getting 20 plus wins really helped and like Jackson said it made it easier for us to get there That interviewer was terrible. I say he was pretty cool Now comes the saddest part of TNN and this is where we pass it on to Zach and Matt What do they mean the saddest? I don't know. That's the best part if you ask me. Well, we gonna jump right into talking about the homecoming Next Friday, the tradition continues like never before. and she's going to talk to us about the art calendar. So, talk to us about your picture. That you, how do you draw it? Like, well, this is a picture of the coffee shop downtown, and I drew it using all pencil. I started by drawing the outline of the building and then working on the details and shading. Okay, so talk to us more about how you chose the buildings for this art calendar. Well, I chose these buildings because these buildings are advertisements. Um, advertisements in, in the calendar. Each one of these uh, businesses paid a certain amount of money to be in these uh, calendars. And um, uh, we just went about a different way to uh, advertise. So I, I would have thought it was more interesting to draw these, uh, draw these uh, businesses out instead of you know, the old fashioned way, just take a picture and yeah. type it up. And how long have you guys been working on this project? We've been working on this project, we worked on this project for about three weeks. Uh, about three weeks. Art two, I have two art two classes and an art one class. Work on this. And what are exactly the funds for? Like, what are you guys going to be buying with this money? Uh, well, my old school district, we did this project for uh, three years, and basically it was just 
to raise funds to buy materials. Specifically for this, um, we're going to try to build up the, uh, the clay program here so we can have uh, specific classes for pottery um, and hand building classes and sculpture. Okay, and the calendars, where can you get them? You can get them in my room, room 129. Uh, they are $10 a piece. Or you can go to the front office as well and uh, get them there. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. Some of the art in there is really good. Do you have a picture in there? Oh, really? Yeah. This is, this is me. This is my house. That's the happy face song. Mm. Um, anyways, on to another couple challenge. Danny, we're going to see how much she knows about her best friend Maya. Okay, are you ready? Where was she born? Shelbyville. Um, would she rather go to Bora Bora or Italy? Bora Bora. What color shirt does she have on today? A maroon jacket. <laughs> um, what are her parents' names? Kim and Chester. Okay, what's her favorite food? Uh, Panda Express. Um, what's her biggest fear? Uh, let me say the dark, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and um, when did she start cheering? Uh, when she was seven. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hi guys, my name is Caitlin Good and I'm here with Maya Rice. We're going to see how much she knows about her best friend Danny. Where was she born? Los Angeles, California. Okay, um, would she rather go to Bora Bora or Italy? Mm, Bora Bora. What color shirt does she have on today? Uh, all of green, duty green. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, what are her parents' names? Carrie and Gary. What's her favorite food? The little chicken rice that like, comes in a package. You, you like put water in it, you put it in the microwave. It's okay. so good. Um, what's her biggest fear? Going backwards, like tumbling. Okay. And when did she start cheering? Oh god, I think she was like five, six, seven. Okay, thank you. Okay. Hi guys, I'm here with Kelly and we're going to see how much she knows about her best friend Alexis. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. Where was she born? Bora Bora, Kentucky. Uh, would she rather go to Bora Bora or Italy? Bora Bora. Um, what color shirt does she have on today? White. What's her parents' name? Deanna and Derek. Um, what's her favorite food? Pizza. What's her biggest fear? Heights. And when did she start shooting? Eighth grade year. Okay, thank you. Hi guys, I'm here with Alexis and we're going to see how much she knows about her best friend Kelly. Where was she born? LaGrange, Kentucky. Um, would she rather go to Bora Bora or Italy? Bora Bora. Um, what color shirt does she have on today? Gray. Um, what's her parents' name? Uh, Trish, or Patricia and Michael. <laughs> okay, what's her favorite food? Ham. Um, what's her biggest fear? Uh, um, ladybugs, ladybugs. And when did she start sharing? Uh, freshman year. Okay, thank you. Anyways, now back to Brayden and Nico's, sadly. In case you guys haven't heard, class t-shirts are now available for sale. So go out there and buy a shirt to support your class.
Anyways, here's our unsung hero, Mrs. Redmond. Welcome to Unsung Hero. I'm Tyler Morrow here with I'm Miss Redmond. She's our unsung hero for the month of January. Uh, so, what exactly do you do here? I am the secretary in the library and assistant to uh, Miss Jones, the librarian. And what is your favorite favorite part about this job? Um, I would say my favorite part is um, it's a good mix of work. Uh, I get to do office work as well as work with teachers and help students um, when they need help out in the library. Do you have a least favorite part about this job? Actually, I don't. I thought about that. I really don't have a least favorite part. I, I pretty well, much like good, every right? aspect. Uh -huh. And what's your favorite moment you've had at Collins? I think my favorite thing about being here at Collins is the fact that uh, I, I know since I came in the beginning that when Collins opened up in uh, 2010, I believe it was, uh, just knowing I'm a part of the history of that and we got to, you know, what, what it's like to start up a new school. I had never, I'd been at Shelby County and came here uh, and it was just kind of neat to be a part of the staff that got to start up a brand new high school. So you've been here all five years? Uh-huh, mm, I have. And if you could do one thing, like maybe change one thing about the school or add one thing to the library, what would you do? Uh, well, we are kind of getting ready to do that. We're making a lot of changes in the library uh, due to all the technology that's coming to the school. You know, students have their own devices and exciting, it's exciting to be a part of that. Uh, you're all going to be seeing some new furniture, new types of furniture. Uh, you know, comfy, more comfy, cushy chairs, uh, more uh, smaller spaces to work uh, in small groups that's going to be coming. So it's, it's kind of fun to be a part of uh, all the changes that are getting ready to happen because of technology. That's cool. And do you, do you like to do anything? What do you like to do in your free time? In my free time, uh, I like to cook. Uh, I like to uh, go to movies, go out to dinner uh, with my friends. And, my husband, I love to spend a lot of time with my grandkids, which I do, and, and, my, and my sons as well. I like to travel. All right. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Mrs. Redman is the uh, library media secretary, and Mrs. Redman does so much for our school and uh, she helps the library running smoothly. Mrs. Redmond does a lot of administrative tasks that free me up so that I have the time to work with teachers and students. And if it weren't for Mrs. Redmond, I would not be able to do the, the sorts of things that I can do um, for our teachers and students at Collins High School. So I'm very grateful for her. Um, she keeps the library uh, organized and she helps to make it an inviting place. Um, she's a very creative person and um, I just really enjoy working with her, and she's a, she's a great asset for our school. Mrs. Redman and I, there's really no specific favorite moment that I can share um, having uh, or share about Mrs. Redman, but I will say that um, every day we manage to laugh about something. Um, she has a great sense of humor. Um, she takes things in stride, and um, we just have a really good time working together. And uh, my message to Mrs. Redman is, uh, again, that I'm very grateful um, to be able to work uh, with you. Uh, you are a wonderful asset to our school. You, you come in early and get things going in the mornings, even though you don't have to be here that early. Um, you're willing to stay and help out and go the extra mile um, to help our school. And uh, I really appreciate that. Miss Redman, you're the unsung hero. Okay, so I can't sing, but I'm here to tell you congratulations. You are one heck of a person. I've known you since our Shelby County High School days. Uh, congratulations. You are an unsung hero. You're, you go one step beyond to help everybody. So um, congratulations, and I love you. Bye. The great thing about Miss Redman is not only is she always super helpful to all the students who are in the library, she really takes her time to make sure she's getting to answer their questions, to find the materials that she want, they want, but she also treats the teachers like that too. She basically drops everything when you come to the library and she's always there to help and try to get you on the right track finding the materials that you need. Speaking of spectacular people, let's talk about Will McDonald. 
You recently signed with Asbury College, so congratulations, Will. That sounds pretty amazing to me, honestly. Well, that sums up this week's TNN. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a great three-day weekend. Now we're going to end it with Crow's Review. Greetings and salutations, I am Leonardo Crow. Crow. Welcome to Pigs. Now, it has come to my attention that shows for kids have diminished in intelligence. I know, I know. Before you start throwing rocks at me, calm, slow your roll, and hear me out. Okay, back in the day, shows were thoughtful. They censored things for kids. They actually tried to teach, uh, you know, what's the word, a moral. Okay? Now, this entire month, I am taking shot after shot after shot of all the things that have been on my hit list. So, I hope you enjoy my ranty, because you're going to be hearing it for a long while. So, what's on the top thing on my list, Bob? Oh, sure, I'll take a shot at Cartoon Network. I'll take a lot of shots. Who here remembers Hey Arnold? I tried until all of you did. Remember that episode called The Pigeon Man? Cartoon Network themselves. I'm Nickelodeon. By the way, you're going to call Cartoon Network. Oh, yeah, it's not be that bad. Anyways, Nickelodeon themselves took out the Twin Towers because they were worried it would be offensive and too soon. But well, nowadays, they leave any uns they leave anything that will get offensive. Literally, Nickelodeon, what has happened to you? You have made Spongebob awful. You have created show after show after show after show of pure idiocracy. I mean, really. I hope within a couple of years, if they have it their way, all the show world entertainment would be purely for jokes. Ah. Really, Nickelodeon, what has happened to you? Have you gotten addicted to crack? And so we need an intervention. Nickelodeon, snap the hell out of it. And calm down a notch. But I don't care what you say right now, okay? I'm taking shot after this thing. This thing would... I'm fixing this, okay? I'm fixing the mistakes of the past. So, in further conclusion, Nickelodeon, do I have to come to your network and slap some sins into you? Because I'll do it. I'll be happy to go to your network station and slap sins into all of your writers and all of everything. I'll be happy to. Trust me, I will. Nickelodeon, to get out of your addiction and to get evolved. You've been handed show after show of good stuff. And yet, here you go, turning it down for stupid shows like Breadwinners and... You, oh my god, Nickelodeon, let's just stop, okay? Stop. I'm warning you. Next week, I'm gonna be taking another shot at a thing, so don't miss it. And this is it. I'm out. I'm gonna go wait.